First, I took for uh, graphics 6 by 6 inches uh, chipboard and I traced the lines on which I wanted to grow my crop. I created two tiles with five lines, one with four and one with uh, three, dividing the tiles into segments of the same size each time. I took a piece of XPS insulation foam and I cut it to the same length of my tiles, or uh, six inches. I then went to Microxen, creating a series of strips of about half an inch for uh, an eighth of an inch, or if you prefer, one and a half for uh, a half centimeter. At this point, with my arch cutter, I went to sculpt the sides of my strips, creating two slanted sides irregularly cut and uh, incline it about 45 degrees, as you see here. With PVA glue, I then attached my strips on the chipboard, moving them a little to encourage adhesion on the entire surface. At this point, I used the pyrograph tip of my foam cutter to create median grooves and thus simulate the seeding line. I have also further sculpted the edges of my foam strips to create a more interesting texture and mask the transition from chipboard to foam as much as possible. Once I was satisfied with the final shape, I passed all the strips with the aluminum foil technique. At this point, I placed the tiles on a plastic cover. The next step are a bit messed up. And uh, I covered my card with the watered PVA glue to start creating the texture of the ground. By placing the tile on a piece of paper, you can recover the excess of flocking. Any sawdust is good here. If you have brown sawdust, it will be easier to paint. The problem with the chipboard is that once covered with glue on one side, it tends to bend. Not bad. Cover the other side with a layer of water PVA glue and you will see that magically the car turns to its original shape. At this point, with very dense PVA glue or tacky glue, I placed some rocks of medium to small sides to make the ground more interesting. We will jump from one piece to another one. In this type of crafting, drying times are crucial and it is uh, worthwhile to carry on one piece while the others are drying. I used bullets for the compressed air pistol because uh, they were some interesting little orange balls. Perfect carrots! I fixed them irregularly to my foam strips using tacky glue.
Now here you can cut some leaves of an aquarium plant both at the dollar store. For a few cents you can buy many vegetables. Just be careful to choose those plants that are composed of many small leaves, very useful for fantasy terrains. With the hot glue gun I attached some leaves to the orange bowls, while others I inserted them to fill the empty space and simulate the carrots not yet ripe. At this point I realized a mistake. Yes. I would have to cover all the peas with brown before starting to create my own vegetables. Luckily, with an airbrush it is not so difficult to cover even the most difficult points. If you do not have an airbrush, I suggest you cover your pieces with brown paint mixed it with Mod Podge. Wait until the pieces are perfectly dry and you will notice that they will still bending. At that point also cover the lower sides with the same mixture and you will be okay. In my case, you see that I prefer to fix my pieces on a large piece of foam with pins to avoid the bending during the drying time. To disguise the transition between foam and cardboard I use soda strips, fixing everything with very dense PVA glue. Here is another plan for the aquarium, perfect for another plantation. For more realism, I might have had to use this for the carrot leaves, but hey, I was improvising guys. Only advice, try not to be too regular and change the number of plants for each row. One of my pieces will be left without vegetables, so I created a mixture of putty, water PV glue and brown acrylic paint. Spreading it among the foam rows, I created a more realistic texture for the ground. Firmer drying, the stucco will produce natural cracks, very realistic for the final result. I added a bit of sawdust to recover some initial texture and not move too far from the other three terrains. Again. I realized that my piece with carrots needed a further blending with sawdust, so I intervened. Once again, something I should have done before creating my own vegetables. Last piece. I took an abrasive kitchen sponge and cut strips about a quarter inch. Leaving one side intact, I opened the other end slightly. I left some strips intact, other I cut them uh, into small pieces. Sewing these plants is very simple. I plunged the open end, end in the PVA glue I stuck in my favorite foliage clamp. I like this homemade because uh, it has uh, two interesting shades of green. And uh, I set my vegetables to the ground, helping me with pins to maintain the position during the drying time.
After everything has dried perfectly, I have completed flocking with various shades of green between the rows of vegetables. Here it depends on your taste, but the important thing is that you use lighter green only when you imagine that the sun can get better. In the end, I improved the transition between colors with my airbrush using a dark brown and a dark olive green. I was surprised myself by the result, I have to admit it. I am getting a strange desire to give up everything and live like a farmer. Nice. Okay guys, this is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe this channel. Remember to support this channel through Patreon or PayPal. And uh, yes, I think I see you all on the next episode. Till next time, happy crafting.